things that actually puts women off uh, IT, uh, why it matters, because actually that is also an important question to answer. Some of the solutions, now of course if I had all the answers we'd have cracked it by now, but um, some of the things that I think might be changing um, in the world. Um, I'm then going to look at a case study around what's happened in the UK regarding curriculum change. Um, this isn't specific to women, but hopefully the initiative will actually inspire more women in future. And then I'd just like to point you at uh, an initiative around developing women leaders. Okay, so in terms of the statistics, um, in the UK, which is obviously what I know about best, and I'll try and give you some, some other statistics as well, uh, females cons consistently achieve higher grades than males at school in IT-related subjects. However, they don't materialise in industry. They feel in the UK just 16% of the IT and telecoms, and this is on the decline. Um, I didn't actually know the European statistic until this evening, so it's really good to hear it's at least 30%. Um, that still isn't good enough, but some things that other people are doing must be an awful lot better than what, what we're doing in the UK. And only 11% of security professionals are women. However, across all uh, disciplines in higher education, females account for more than half of those actually in, in the UK who are getting degrees in terms of applications and acceptances to study at university. Across STEM subjects, and STEM is the term that we give to science, technology, engineering and mathematics, actually female applicants are 34% and acceptances to higher education are 35%. That, sound, that doesn't sound too bad. But actually uh, the government has a lot of wriggle room in its definition of STEM, so I hope nobody's recording this before I get <laughs> um, The government varies its definition of STEM depending on what mood it's in. So STEM can include psychology, in some definitions it'll include nursing because that's in the science, and so that's part of the reason that those headline statistics don't seem so bad. When you look at computer science and engineering, as you can see, the applications and acceptances at university are very low, 12-13%. The gender imbalance is, is both in the IT industry and in IT occupations, and it's across, uh, as you heard, all EU nations. Um, so the basic problem that we've got in the UK is that we're actually far worse than the average that's happening in the, in the EU. And there's also issues around pay gaps in the IT sector, typically a 16% pay gap between men and women in the UK. In the US, in the 1980s, 37% of women science majors were women. In, in 2012 it was 18. So they've got a similar problem, they are also on the decline. But 57% of their bachelor's degrees were earned by women, but only 12% in computer science degrees. So it's, it's a concern. What's happening in other countries? Well, some countries it seems to be okay. Um, in Singapore in 1987, 50% of application analyst programmers um, and systems analysts and designers were female. And the majority uh, were graduates from computer science courses were female. Why was that? They, they felt their answer to this was government promotion, perception of good careers, um, preference possibly for computing over engineering, gender neutral exposure, um, and also, and that's one of the key themes that I will talk about, is assistance with domestic responsibilities. Um, whether we like it or not, women still tend to be the major, um, uh, you know, of the, of the two parties, the major party that actually looks after the home and the children, and that can be something that actually affects uh, participation. Many countries around the world do actually have this crack. They have women that dominate. I was recently in Bahrain doing a validation event um, at, for Bahrain Polytechnic, and I was fascinated to hear that 60% of their students in um, higher education computer science were actually women. And I asked them why. I said, how on earth did you achieve this? What is the answer? And the answer was, we have absolutely no idea. Um, it just happened. So I then started asking a bit more about their school system. And this is my understanding of their school system, so my apologies if it's wrong. 
But my understanding of their school system was that at a certain age, I, I, I got the impression somewhere around 14, they, they split students into sort of STEM, science, technology and maths students and sort of arts. There are various categories that you can decide to study after that. And if you study the STEM subjects, then you qualify for entry to any university degree. If you take one of the other routes, you don't. So far more women, and most people, do take the STEM route. As a result of that, and this is me now hypothesising, because traditionally when you look at where women go, they tend to go more towards the, the less engineering end. So I'm just hypothesising that computing science is sort of further away from engineering, and that might be why you get quite a few in computer science, but I, I don't know. But there are, there are places around the globe where uh, women do actually dominate. Um. But there are all sort of other effects that I think are very hard to pick up. So those of culture and society. Uh, one of the things that's been shown to improve participation rates, and certainly it's true in the UK, is girl-only schooling. A lot of people don't like it, and um, I can understand that. But the reality is, it doesn't seem to scare the women off. When you have men and women together, for some reason, the women are more reticent to actually go into to, to the computers. They're, they're less confident, and the males can dominate. There was an interesting experiment um, in Australia many, many years ago. I think it was back in, in, in the uh, 80s or early 90s, in primary schools. They noticed when they, when they put computers in the schools that um, the boys would rush in with confidence and take all the machines, and the girls were sort of a little more reticent and, and standing back. So they painted half the computers pink. <coughs> the boys wouldn't touch them. <laughs> I'm sure the solution is not as simple as that. But... So again, coming back to, to more compulsory maths and science at secondary school, as with the Bahraini uh, 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 example, that also does seem to have an impact in encouraging more women into the discipline. But also societal perceptions of the discipline, the esteem within which they're held, uh, understanding of parents, how much they push their children into a discipline. And IT is a fairly new discipline, you know, relative to engineering and maths. A lot of parents don't understand them, and I think that also does have an effect on where they steer their children. One of the things we, we look at statistically is what we call the leaky pipeline. So basically going from the early years in school all the way through to industry, we, we lose women all the way along. So the pipeline is leaking. So we've got little drips coming out of the pipeline as we lose women as we progress. So what tends to happen actually in the early years, um, certainly from what I can gather in, in, in most of the Western world, is that actually the interest is fairly similar in your primary school, in your early age. And then it starts to go wrong about the age of 12, 13. Um, as you can see, in, in the UK, girls take 51% of GCSEs, that's the exam at the age of 16, 44% in IT. Now, that's not too bad. We're getting towards the halfway mark. So that's at the age of 16. But then by the time you get to A-levels at the age of 18, we're down to 6.5%. So we've done something pretty damaging to those girls, to not wanting them to continue. And then by the time you get to university and then into the workforce, we've just leaped and lost more women as we've gone along. My apologies on, you probably can't read, um, this is this, uh, as a slide I got from a colleague and I wasn't able to expand the font on it, but it, they've also done an analysis of the leaky pipeline <coughs> in Scotland over the STEM subjects looking at how many women actually make it through to professor. So those, those, you only need to get the general impression that those lines are going downwards, essentially, um, all the way through school, all the way through university to those who actually make it into professor of, the, uh, of their particular subject. So what does attract women or not attract women? Why are uncomfortable to many people? And I know women who've left because of that type of culture. Another issue is, of course, we have to accept the fact we can't do anything about biology and women are the ones that have babies. So they do take time out for family and I think we're making it harder for women to get back into the workforce. 
Um, I was presenting in Jersey recently and uh, spoke to...